So in my opinion, one of the witness statements added by A.H. details a plot by A.H. and friends against Johnny Depp that could have well ended it all. I think this is an insane one. I think it should be detailed, but it's usually not talked about. So today, you and I will be covering the witness statement of one Josh Drew. So hey there, so today we are returning to that wonderful world of Johnny Depp coverage. And this, it continues our cataloging of everything out there so you, you have all of the information. See, that's one of the problems with transcripts, with audio and whatnot. The media, they don't cover it. Many people, they only tell you parts of it. So this is an attempt to catalog it all. It'll all be put in a playlist after the fact. So like I said at the beginning of this, this is the witness statement of one Josh Drew. He was married to Raquel a.k.a. Rocky Pennington, the best friend of A.H., so you expect certain things out of this witness statement. Now, what's fascinating about this document is it has all of the exhibits attached, and typically you don't end up with them. You just end up with the statement. So we'll skim over some of that, too. And this is the guy that cataloged all of those pictures of A.H. Oh, yeah, and you can tell when he took them that he was trying to lay down a narrative. Like I said, it's pretty interesting, and especially when we get to the conspiracy conspiracy adding part. So, gives us his name. He told us he's a hospitality development consultant, and then he promises that all of this stuff, it's going to be factual, and that he would actually make a statement, and he would testify if needed. So, I met A.H. and Johnny Depp when I started dating Raquel, a.k.a. Rocky Pennington. Rocky and I later got married, but have since divorced. I was deposed on the 19th of November, 2019, by Johnny Depp and A.H. Uh, civil action. They give you the number there. In the Circuit Court of Fairfax County, Virginia. I attached the transcript of the deposition as a true record of it. I first met A.H. in June, 2014. I met Johnny sometime soon after that. Rocky was living at the Eastern Columbia Building at that time in one of the apartments next to A.H. and Johnny. I met Johnny shortly after. After at their home. Over the course of 2014 2015, I was a regular visitor to the Eastern Columbia building. Rocky and I were engaged in the summer of 2015, and later that year, I moved into the Eastern Columbia building with her, and we remained there until after the incident, 21st of May 2016. You know, when the free time was over. Over this period, I spent a lot of time with AH there. I also saw Johnny regularly and spent time hanging out with both of them. I wonder how he feels about the backstabbing after he paid for everything, by the way. Continuing, I have had a very limited contact with A.H. in the past two years since my divorce. I have not been in contact with Johnny. I consider myself to be independent from both parties. I understood from our interactions that Johnny was jealous. I understood from our interaction. Rocky told me, so that's very important. She, he didn't observe this. Rocky told, based on conversations with A.H., so told by somebody who was told that Johnny had a particular issue with James Franco because he and A.H. had some intimate scenes in a project they were filming, which Johnny did not want her doing. His name came up often, and it would cause fights between them. They were arguing about it very regularly. Johnny was using, we'll use the word substances during the period I knew him. He tells what substances are there. From time to time, I saw him take various substances. He wasn't always sober and he had private treatment to try to remain sober. uh, He was often drinking to excess. I overheard them fighting. For example, during a trip to France, I heard Johnny uh, shouting at A.H. about a role she had done. Johnny was shouting about the nudity writer in the film that she claimed was fraudulent, and he accused her of knowing about and going against his wishes to include it. I knew from what had been discussed with uh, Rocky and A.H. that Johnny had demanded that A.H. stop doing nudity in her films and that she cut down on intimate scenes with co-stars. Rocky told me about various fights they had had over the years and said Johnny was jealous of A.H.'s co-stars. Now right here is fascinating for two points. You have A.H. calling Johnny Depp the monster when he would get angry and yell at her and hit her. This was conveyed by someone else. So that monster label that you saw brought up by the sun and will likely be part of the defense by A.H., she 
helped create that label. It wasn't Johnny Depp's label. No, it was hers. What's also fascinating are these claims are passed down to someone who then, it sounds like, was orchestrating a plot. I'll show you in just a few minutes. So I was aware and had been told about incidents in which Johnny had hit Amber, most likely by Rocky. So Rocky is fueling these things. I observed there to be a significant amount of empathy among A.H. and Rocky and a genuine belief that Johnny's were going to say substance a use caused his behavior and that he would somehow lose control. Again, he's going to lose control. So remember that when we get into our little plot detail. So the plane incident, 2014. This took place before I met Rocky. So he did not even, he wasn't even around for when this happened. But I subsequently heard about it after the incident, 21st of May, 2016. Rocky told me that Johnny had kicked A.H. on a plane after a fight about one of her projects. Rocky said that Johnny had blacked out on a plane and had cried when he was later told by his assistant. Stephen D. that he kicked A.H. It's the same thing with Australia, although, again, handed down information, handed down from someone else. Rocky told me what A.H. had told her about this incident, that there had been huge knockdown drag out fight, and then, of course, Johnny had cut his uh, finger off. So, December 15th, Los Angeles. Rocky was due to meet A.H. that evening, and when she hadn't had a response to her text messages, she let herself into PH3 to go looking for A.H. to check on her. I went with her, and we found things out of order with things strewn across the kitchen. I remember seeing the words, Why be a fraud? All this BS written on the countertop in handwriting I recognized to be Johnny's. Rocky told me that something wasn't right and sent me home while she was looking for A.H. About 10 to 15 minutes later, I received a message from Rocky saying something like, he beat the bleep out of her again and told me she was looking after her. I remember being told that uh, they had reached out to a nurse to do a concussion check, which, you know, of course, we don't have any proof of. Rocky told me that there was a big Fight, and Johnny had headbutted A.H., ripped out pieces of hair, smothered her, and that they had called Dr. Kipper's office to get A.H. a concussion check. I talked to A.H. about it. I saw A.H. that night. Next day, saw her injuries, saw her bruising around both eyes, and extended down the bridge of her nose, and her forehead was red. I remember her being terrified about how she looked because she had to appear on TV that day or the next day, and her injuries were visible, but she couldn't pull out of it. Melanie I, her makeup artist, was brought over to try to cover up, well, everything there. I was with Rocky, and she took pictures of A.H. as well, all of that incident. They're talking about the James Corden incident, by the way. Go and look up that show if you want. Look up A.H., look up James Corden if you haven't seen it. Oh, yeah, it's very telling about the reality versus this. So then, April twenty second, 2016, birthday party, L.A., We had a birthday party for A.H. for her 30th on the 21st of April 2016. I catered the party. Johnny turned up hours late, and A.H. was making excuses for him. He turned up eventually and was clearly intoxicated. You know, again, look at my last video that I did about this. Documenting certain things doesn't seem to match up with the business partner's statements. He was slurring and swaying a bit. A.H. seemed upset about him showing up late and drunk. The Next morning, I heard about what had happened after we le- after we had all had left. The thrust of it was there uh, had been a big fight after everyone had left the party. Then you have May 21st, 2016, L.A. This is the last incident. I was with Rocky in the apartment we lived in. That's PH5 with Liz Mars. We were made aware that Johnny was coming over to see A.H. And I remember Rocky being concerned after the incident after A.H.'s birthday party that she should be there to support A.H. A.H. told Rocky just to be around and that she would text her if there was a problem. Rocky received a text to go over to help A.H. at 8.06 p.m. and she bolted over there. I did not observe what happened, but short, uh, but learned about it shortly afterwards from Rocky and A.H. Shortly after, I heard a large noise, which I later discovered was the sound of a wine bottle being slammed into our door at PH1. I heard Johnny shouting and swearing at his security guards to let him in. He came in and was shouting and screaming at me, cursing right in my face. I left calmly. Liz was in the apartment, but I saw her bolt upstairs to hide from him. I don't recall exactly the sequence of events 
since A.H. was in a state where it located her and Rocky. Rocky and I ushered her into our apartment. By this time, Johnny had left our apartment, and we deadbolted the door to keep him out and to keep her safe until Johnny had left the building. Rocky told me Johnny had shoved her. I got angry and went outside and banged on the door of PH5, but he'd already left. I then went back to PH1 to talk to A.H. and Rocky, and I heard more about what had happened. A.H. had Johnny's phone, and I took it from her. She told me that he had thrown it at her and it hit her in the face when it was left behind. I was told that Io had been on the phone with A.H. and Johnny to talk about Johnny's accusations about excrement being left in the bed. Excrement. <laughs> at some point, while Io was on the phone, Johnny had hit A.H. in the face with the iPhone, and Io had called the police. I later learned he had wound his arm back and thrown a cell phone into her face. You know, like a baseball pitcher. That's what they love saying in their narrative. Rocky went over there and got between Johnny and A.H. to stop him hitting A.H. After five minutes, security officer Jerry Judge called my mobile and told me his boss had left his cell phone and asked me if I knew where it was, and I told him that I had it. They wanted to come back to get it, and I said that they could come back to get it, but words to the effect, they could not set foot in the building. I met Jerry downstairs, gave him the phone. He took a few steps to walk away and then turned and asked me, is she okay? I said something like, are you bleeping? Kidding me? He beat the blank out of her again. And you guys just stood there and watched it. He started to uh, demure and then said something along the lines of it's not his business, their husband and wife. He barely touched her. I said something like, get the bleep out of here. Be real proud of yourself. Get the bleep out. Rocky called A.H.'s lawyer, Samantha Spector, to ask her what we should do. We were told to make a contemporary note of what had happened. We went back into their apartment, took pictures of the damage. A.H. called her publicist, Jody. G. Later, I greeted to police officers who arrived about 15 minutes later and showed them around the apartment. I showed them broken glass, walked past a large wine stain in the hallway. I showed them various damage to the property, a wine dent in the door of our apartment, PH1. Then a tour of PH5 where there were a broken picture frame, smash glass, and Rocky's jewelry and other things strewn around across the apartment. They acknowledged that something had clearly happened. I watched the female Female officer take A.H. aside and speak to her privately. As the female officer was speaking to A.H., I spoke to the male officer. And I asked him what could be done because we were obviously upset with what had happened. He told me that there was damage in the apartments and A.H.'s face was red, so there was enough to pick Johnny up if she filed a report. I told him she was not going to file a report, but I appreciated what he had said. And as the officers left, they told me A.H. had declined to give them a report. Hmm, and you know how that turned out with the officer saying, yeah, that never happened. So after uh, this, we cleaned up some of the broken glass in PH3, was uh, was on the kitchen floor so the dogs wouldn't be hurt. Other things, like piles of uh, books strewn about, was left as it was. I greeted a second set of officers who arrived and told them there had already been police uh, visit and showed them the business card. They said they had to do a check of the property. I took them for a walk through the apartment, and they spoke with A.H. in private. The next day, Rocky had a jewelry show, so I cleared my schedule so I could be there to help A.H. if she needed it and to be with her so she wouldn't be alone and so I could make sure she was safe. I remember seeing the marks on A.H., a red mark and a small bruise on her cheekbone and red marks just above the eyebrow. She also had some swelling. I understand that Johnny has submitted a statement to U.S. libel proceedings to the effect that I said Rocky had lied about where she was before A.H. texted for help at 8.06 p.m. and that she was, in fact, hiding in PH3 waiting for Johnny to return. This is false. I never said this to Johnny. Now, along with this, you have hundreds of pages of attachments. We just skipped the transcript of him doing oral deposition, a transcript of other things that happened. And after this picture, we will skip the transcript of the police officers and what they said about that night. Here's a picture of him describing some of the setup so you get an idea where everything is laid out. There's an incident recall form after the police statements and before Raquel Pennington's deposition, which we'll also skip for this portion. There are also pictures of AH that are added. We've skipped over those 
but I've added that to different videos. And I would say, if you've seen a picture out there saying, this is what AH looked like, there's about 10 more of that same picture with different lighting and contrasting, trying to take the perfect picture, if you will. You have text messages, too. These actually happen after the event. I'll skip over this. This is 5-22-2016, where AH is asking for statements so she can file for a DVRO. And interestingly, she's saying things like, hey, can you get this right up for me? Oh, that's great. Okay, hey, you think of anything? You know, let me know. Do you happen to have any small bills, by the way? One fives and tens? We can trade you. Do you have any money you can lend us, by the way? Sure, I can help you. Checking it out out right now seems i don't know weird considering people are mooching and well they need certain statements and then you have this now remember a lot of people have dismissed this portion as some kind of joke between friends but remember what was being built around it we're talking about 1 3 2015 you have this person being told by multiple people that the person they're talking about is some kind of monster the monster in fact and well let's just read through this and you tell me if this is a joke so you have a discussion here about picking up rocky from the airport you know they talk about that a little bit here and there they say jay and i have to have a little talk tonight when we get home probably till like eight and then we're cool rocks gets in at 9 30 right you guys want to come over after that hang out and eat perfect i'll bring them just in case. Them seems strange because he's using a word that's not described. A picture of them will come through later, but A.H. already knows what it is. Good man. Ha ha. So pretty. Oh no, that'd be far too easy. That'd be far too easy in dealing with Johnny Depp. O.A.H., you don't use them. You just show them to it. I guess I could reconsider wow she says and then he says i have a giant new knife you can borrow if you like so this is the picture that came through now like i say if somebody is telling you all of these terrible things you are a best friend of sorts you know you're also living off of this person's time you tell me what's a joke and you tell me what's a narrative possibly being built up for other reasons again this document is fascinating because of the multiple pictures that are taken because of the text messages that were added that are supposed to be innocuous no big deal guys none at all and so on i'll leave a link to that in the description check that whole thing out you definitely should and as always let me thank you for being here showing up you empower these endeavors not enough people say that i appreciate it i hope you had a great weekend too if you want to help out the channel too there are links in the description we still have a comic book up for example we could use help getting word out on that we're finalizing we're getting closer and closer but you know what while we're out there like i said we could use help uh, getting the word out and on other ways to help out the channel too like i said appreciate you folks no matter what you do you just being here makes this stuff work so thank you appreciate you and we'll see you soon